Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is David Schlothauer here on February the 23rd, 2023. In today's video, we are keeping an eye on a severe weather outbreak that could occur across northern Texas, Oklahoma, and much of Kansas and to the south. Tornadoes, large hail, and significant damaging winds are definitely a possibility as this shapes up on Sunday. So taking a look at the latest European model here for February the 23rd, 2023, we're timing out the severe weather on Sunday, just a Sunday's event here for the High Plains. So going forward here for Sunday afternoon, this is right around say about say three or four o'clock in the afternoon for central time, we can see we do have the storms that do look to pop up thanks to the dry line and cyclogenesis that is going to be shaping up across eastern Colorado. We got the dry line, we got the moisture out ahead of this, and we are going to see initial intense discrete storms firing up along that dry line and even out ahead of this where we do got a couple of storms that may pop up. Not only that, we do have a weak warm front boundary and any storms that do ride that could be capable of producing maybe a tornado or two, but it's really not until we get into the evening hours of Sunday into early Monday morning when this is really going to explode. We got a very intense dry line cold front that is going to be sweeping across central Texas, northeastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, eastern Kansas into western Missouri, western Arkansas uh, with some strong winds. We're possibly going to see non-thunderstorm damaging winds associated with this blowing dust in the wake of that uh, front. Because we got 978 millibar low pressure system on the Euro model. So some pretty intense cyclogenesis going on here. And this continues all the way into Monday morning. Look at that cold front and dry line really meeting up there across eastern Tennessee, eastern Kentucky into Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Not to mention... There's also going to be more freezing rain and snowfall with this severe weather event, especially to the north. Let's go forward here. We can see moderate to heavy snowfall on the northern side of the system because we got some cooler air to the north that is going to try to wrap around, but it's going to have a hard time doing so because this is coming from a low latitude and we don't have a lot of cold air advection on the northern side, but enough that there is going to be some snowfall there over Minnesota again and northern Wisconsin. Now you're catching up with some of the snowfall this winter season. And then, of course, the cold front will then move further east into, say, Ohio, as well as western Virginia, Virginia, and the Carolinas. But it's going to fall apart as it progresses further east, as you see here. Really not much left along that boundary once it moves offshore of the mid-Atlantic coast. But still... Still a system in itself, going to bring quite a bit of snowfall through Monday afternoon and evening hours into early Tuesday morning, February the 28th. Actually, the last day of February could be a stormy one across California and the Northeast. So now that we talked about that, what about our winds? The winds, or what we call the jet stream at 500 millibars or 18,000 feet above the surface, Definitely a lot of energy with this upper level cyclone that is going to be uh, rapidly moving into the four corners. And we can see that here on the latest European model. Pretty impressive here. Uh, northern Texas into Oklahoma, really strong dynamics. We got a negatively tilted trough here approaching western Texas, as well as Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And that is not a weak jet by any means. That's a 130 knot jet, 120, 130 knots. However you look at it, be really strong negatively tilted jet. And the dynamics are going to be very strong with this. So you can see right there. 128 knot jet 130 when we actually click on a sounding actually we are not able to hold on a second we can see that yeah it's not going to let me click on it on the european model unfortunately but i'll tell you what a lot of deep layer shear is going to be in place with this severe weather setup uh, across northern Texas, Oklahoma, and southern Kansas, eastern Kansas could be really in trouble here if this pans out as it is expected. And then that moves again into the upper Midwest near the Great Lakes by Monday. 
Now, as far as moisture goes, well, the kinematics are not going to be a problem. We're talking about damaging winds, wind gusts between 50 and 60 miles an hour from the south. So that's not a problem. The deep layer shear is not a problem. But what about our instability and moisture? Well, that's not going to be so much of a factor. We have a little bit of limited moisture from the south here, but dew points in the upper 50s to lower 60s. We could see dew points between 55 and 60 degrees in central and southern Kansas, getting into the low 60s across Oklahoma City and to the south there. Northern Texas, like Dallas, dew points are in the mid 60s. So definitely plenty of moisture here. But we could see more richer moisture, more like upper 60s to lower 70 dew points, then we would be in a lot more trouble because we would have more discrete mode development well out ahead of the, um, the, the dry line and within the warm sector. But either way, this is definitely primed for a pretty significant severe weather event on Sunday. I'm not calling it an outbreak just yet, just because there's a little bit of uncertainty, but if this goes moderate, it's going to be a severe weather outbreak. No doubt about it at all on Sunday. Temperature-wise, definitely warm. Temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s across Oklahoma. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s across central and northern Texas right before the dry line. So definitely some warm, moist air going to be advancing northward due to the very dynamic setup. And when we take a look at our CAPE numbers here, there's going to be uh, up to a thousand joules of CAPE, especially um, early on in the period here on the GFS. We're up to a thousand, maybe up to 1500 right out ahead of this. Look at that 1200 joules of CAPE. So definitely some instability to work with on Sunday in across Western Texas, Western Oklahoma, and Central Kansas for severe weather. So now another thing that I like to look at is the Storm Prediction Center. No doubt about it, they're going 30% for severe weather across Northern Texas, right in this area. So follow my mouse here, all in the orange is where we have the 30% risk for severe weather. Okay, and then in the outer end here, we have a 15% chance of severe weather. This includes for Dallas, this includes for Kansas City, and even some of the outlining areas here in central Kansas, under a 15% chance for severe weather. Even Fayetteville here in the Arkansas, under a threat, 15% chance for severe weather. So definitely this area will have to really be watched. They might expand this. They may contract it a little bit. But I would see them going moderate in day two at least. Day three, probably not, unless they are more confident than enough to issue one. But definitely, either way we put it, we're going to have to really watch Sunday. And right now, if my plans do not get interrupted by any means with family, we're going live. Okay, we're going live on this event. That's for sure. We're going to be tracking supercells, a QLCS line, a squall line even, marching across this portion of the nation. All right. If you're liking the content so far, um, be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and slap that like button, folks. You guys are really awesome. I do appreciate this. I mean, my last few videos, we have actually been able to get over 100 likes. So thank you all for liking the video and also subscribing to the channel because I'm doing all I can to make sure I am saving lives. I am providing the most accurate weather content possible on the YouTube channel, but sometimes when family gets in the way, when my plans get changed and stuff, that's why I'm not always here every single day at uploading a video or going live on a significant weather event, but I was able to go live last night, and I hope you all enjoyed that. More on that in at the end of the video here. So now when we take a look at the overall forecast, what are temperatures going on? What's going on here? Well, 6 to 10 days, we're likely to be well below average. I mean, 90 to 100% chance of seeing below average temperatures across California and Nevada. This includes for the Pacific Northwest and the Four Corners. But look at this. On the other side of the nation, it is warm. We're talking... Uh, a 40 to 70% chance for temperatures to being above average for the southeast. So you're going from winter back west to spring, if not summer-like temperatures back east. 
So what a crazy extreme weather pattern. And well, when you get these two air masses, cold meeting warm, we get some pretty nasty intense cyclones that form off the Colorado Rockies, like the one that we're gonna be seeing here. This explains why we are going to see more bigger storms perhaps later on in the period. Probably this won't be the first one we see. We might see more after this. And then the 8 to 14 day forecast, it is still looking colder than normal likely for the west and warmer than average for the east. Precipitation for the next 6 to 10 days, leaning above average for much of the nation, including for the Great Lakes and the Northeast with leaning below chances for precipitation for Southern Texas and Southern Florida. Look at this, likely above though for the four corners, including for Arizona. Nice to see some rain down there before the monsoon kicks into high gear for the summer season. Eight to 14 day precipitation, leaning above average for again, the, much of the nation to the North, the Northwest and the Northeast, including for the Great Lakes. Now, before I do in this folks, I do have a couple of announcements that I definitely wanna share with you all. Now, some of you were probably still gonna ask me, am I going live tonight? Well, right now it is more up in the air than it wasn't last night. And that's because some of the models have backed off on our snow chances as well as our strong winds. I'll see if I can do something, but I cannot guarantee tonight, folks, because again, there's no point of live streaming if the weather is not going to be as significant across my area, but we'll see, okay? Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed that I go live, but I'm not sure on that yet. But if I don't go live tonight, I will have more weather content production tomorrow. That's Friday. I will have more content out on Saturday and of course on Sunday when hopefully if plans and scheduling allow, I'm going live on this beast of severe weather across Oklahoma, Northern Texas and Southern Kansas. Make sure you already set your reminders for that. Put it on your calendar. If I go live, it will probably begin as early as one o'clock in the afternoon or maybe earlier. I do have church in the morning, so we'll see on how this is all gonna work out. Hopefully it waits until the later afternoon hours, then I'll have more time in uh, for me to go live on the channel. But otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, Make sure you destroy the subscribe button right now if you haven't already. Let's get this channel up to 5,000 subs and also like the video if you did enjoy today's update. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching.